So Erin, thanks for taking the time to talk with us today. Uh, if you could start by introducing yourself, um, telling us your role, where you work, um, and a little bit about um, ab about your setting. Hi, um, I work for Bettendorf Middle School. I teach seventh and eighth grade science. Um, I've been teaching that for about 10 years um, and currently probably impact about 150 kids this school year. That, that's great to hear. Um, and um, what about the Green Ink STEM model and framework convinced you to give it a try? So I was willing to give the Green Ink STEM model a try uh, because it is a project-based uh, model and I think that's one of the most important ways to impact our students. Um, they were able to give us the opportunity to take 300 middle school students um, to a prairie and do some investigations and analyze data, collect information, uh, work with people in our community, biologists and professionals that work out in environmental settings. And then we were able to take some of the information we found and then apply it to um, situations about, like we're trying to restore this prairie that we observed. And that, that was something that biologists would do in the real world. And it was something that the kids could see firsthand uh, that they could do this as a job. And then I think it gives kids opportunities that you just wouldn't find in a normal classroom setting. Uh, we have data and information to analyze and process and collect um, at the scene and then we come back to school and then we have to turn that into um, valuable information for the kids to have a takeaway. And um, I think that we can impact more students through project-based settings like this. Yeah, that's fantastic to hear the, the project-based and the impact on the students. Um, yeah, a lot of good stuff in, in the project you're working on. And how has your approach to teaching um, about the environment changed as a result of going through this project and using the Greening STEM framework? I think what's changed is the number of people that I can impact. Um, Greening STEM has allowed me to uh, form collaborations between different school districts in the surrounding area. And that's something that um, I guess put me out of my comfort zone. I usually don't do that. So I was able to work with um, a community college and then another school district. And that was uh, a really cool way for me to kind of spread my love for environmental science to other teachers um, and then also impact students at those schools as well. Yeah, the growing partnerships um, has been has been really neat for, for us to get to, to see happening and, and developing over time. And um, which aspect of the Greening STEM model was the most challenging to include and how did you overcome that challenge? Honestly, it was working with other uh, schools. That's something that I'm just not used to. Um, so that was a challenge for me. Uh, the thing that helped was our STEAM coordinator, Chris Like. Um, he's really good at helping communications between me and the other school districts, um, and then the teachers within those school districts. Um, and then I also have a really great team who is flexible and willing to meet up with other uh, teachers and staff members from those schools. And that kind of helped overcome that hurdle, that challenge. And once we did, I think we realized the value in collaborating with other schools. You uh, mentioned a, a few others there, including the STEAM coordinator, Chris Like, and some of your other um, colleagues. Um, it, do you want to touch on any uh, others, or aside from yourself, were there others who were instrumental in taking on the Greening STEM project and deciding to use this approach? Chris Like was our um, main coordinator, so he was the one who had the final say, and then my team as well. Um, and they're very flexible, and they, uh, they kind of want to go with whatever we're doing, and they're very supportive. And then I found that um, our principal was supportive of this, and you know we brought this to the board, and the board also supported us taking this screening STEM approach. So we had full support everywhere in our district, which helped this process go more smoothly. We had to take our kids on field trips, so that meant like taking kids from other classrooms, and the teachers in the building were also supportive of us uh, using the greeting STEM approach to take kids out of the building and give them a great, a great experience. Yeah, that's wonderful to hear you had that support um, across levels and that's something we've seen and that, that, could, that could be great advice for others as well of having that um, you know, coordinated effort. Um, what advice would you give to educators looking to integrate environmental education using the greening STEM model? Um, I would say that you're not going to regret it. Uh, because it's going to give you an opportunity to do project-based learning. If you're familiar with the project-based learning model, um, this is just going to intensify it and make it um, even better for you. Um, and then Greeting STEM allowed for funding on a project that I wouldn't have had otherwise. So I thought that that was such an amazing experience to be able to bring our kids to different locations, then be able to work with biologists and then also be able to apply this to restoring a prairie um, and the funding that goes into that would have been lost if Green STEM hadn't helped us out and then also given us the framework and the foundation for how to model our projects. 
So I would say give them a try. They're very helpful and it made our project a success this year. Well, thank you very much. And we look forward to seeing where your project continues in uh, next year and the years to come. All right, thank you.